Yes, hello world, Eric Knowles here, uh, uh, back with uh, talk number six um, on uh, René Lalique and the works of, and this is the, the, the final talk uh, on Lalique, although there are other talks that will follow this. Uh, I'm going to be looking at uh, uh, William Moorcroft and the pottery. I'm going to be looking at uh, Louis Comfort Tiffany uh, and, uh, and his glass and table lamps um, and probably be looking at the glassmakers from the Alsace Lorraine region. So we're talking here obviously in terms of uh, Galley, uh, Majorelle, Dome, whatever. Um, so uh, uh, watch this space. But uh, th today um, it's a case of uh, rounding up uh, and uh, forgive me the talks I've given so far we've only just you know touched the surface of, of uh, everything that we could uh, with regards to what I call the genius of René Lalique and uh, I don't use that term um, very often but in René Jules Lalique's uh, case, um, it's well deserved. So um, let's uh, have a look at the man. Here he is. Um, here's a late photograph taken round about 1930, 1935. Um, and um, he's uh, busy. Um, uh, looking at a, a lovely bowl. If you if you're trying to wreck your brains, thinking well, what's that one called? It's called Charms. And um, but let's move on to uh, 1925. 1925 um, is uh, is big news in France. It's big news in Paris uh, because, as you can see from the poster, um, it's the Exposition des Arts Décoratifs, uh, and uh, from which the term apparently um, Art Deco is derived. Uh, but it was a high point for Lalique. He was involved not just in his own uh, salon, but several others. Uh, but more importantly, he was involved with producing this. Whoa, it's a big one. Um, it's um, over 50 metres high. It's um, a fountain which he designed in collaboration with the architect uh, Marc uh, Lucozand. Uh, who he worked with on other pavilions as well as this fountain. It's an illuminated fountain. Yes, it lights up um, in the evening. Uh, must have been quite, quite dramatic, uh, to say the very least. But here's another image of it, uh, which shows it in another perspective uh, with some of the crowds. And it's in interesting to think that all the, the various uh, pavilions that have been erected uh, between, I think it was around about April and October, 1925, um, all had to come down eventually. Uh, but this, uh, as you can see, uh, 50 metres high, um, it's known as uh, the Source de la, uh, 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 Source de la France, uh, the Rivers of France. And if you can see, there are something like, let me see, I made a note of this, there are 17 tiers um, on all of graduated size. On, on all of those tiers, uh, they're encircled by these glass figures. Um, there are 14 variations. They've all got names. Um, they, they all derive from water goddesses, water nymphs. Um, and here are two of them, as you can see. Um, and they were made um, to be fitted with illuminated um, wooden uh, bases uh, to give off an ambient light. Um, and here's, I think this is one of my favourites, just a little detail. Now, this lady is called Doris. Yes, Doris. Uh, Doris is uh, a name from, um, from the classics, a name of a water nymph. Um, and what I love about this one is that the fact that she's got hold of this sort of, um, sort of eye-boggling fish or whatever in her hands. So um, moving away from Paris 1925, and again, Paris 1925, we could talk about for at least an hour. So um, I think you should look at my talks really as, a, as an aperitif for what you can then go off and find um, on your own volition. But what about this? Um, this is um, the, the 1929, um, uh, this is uh, the poster for uh, what to all intents and purposes is the Orient Express. And here is the train, by the way. Here's the train, yep. Um, I, I can always hear the music uh, from, from the film, the sort of 
murder on the orient express and let's have a look uh let's have a look inside uh well first of all there's a modern day carriage yeah doesn't it don't you really want to get on it i know i do um and let's have a look at at an interior now this is an interior that you can see two seats and it's obvious that the two people missing there are uh are, are, uh, are captain hastings and uh hercule Warrow. um and it would not have been a stranger on this train. But in all fairness, um, the carriages that, um, that, that, that receive these panels, which you can see in the background, but here they are, uh, were designed for the carriages that were to take people um, from Paris uh, down to the Côte d'Azur, uh, rather than the Orient Express. But um, fair to say, over the years, they were probably swapped around and they probably did make the trip to uh, Vienna and Istanbul but um, having said all that um, here are the panels um, and fair to say that many years ago I was asked to do a valuation on some carriages were, which were um, in uh, a certain part of South London and um, the company uh, found them so I said the company now we're talking about Lalique the modern day Lalique um, they um, found themselves having to um, reproduce some of these panels so there are uh, a certain number on the market um, which although the originals were intended for the train um, have been made um, for, uh, for well put them where you like I think most people put them in the bathrooms the idea of having something like this in your bathroom you know how do you concentrate on shaving for goodness sake but anyway um, uh, I'm going to I'm going to leave the train I'm, I'm going to make a, a trip uh, across uh, the English Channel uh, no we're not going actually into Le Belle France yet we're going to Jersey um, and this is uh, St Matthew's Millbrook better known to many as the Glass Church. And without being unkind, a bit of a disappointment you arrive and you find that it's not anything like the Crystal Palace at all. In fact, the building itself is quite pedestrian, forgive me. I mean, I, architecture is my first love, but when I saw this building, it did not enamour me until I actually got to the door. Now look at these doors, they are quite, incredible absolutely incredible um it is it's all to do with the year 1934 um, when lady trent who was the widow of lord trent who was better known as jesse boot and jesse boot a man from nottingham uh, hence the trent um jesse boot was the man that gave you boots the chemist and I'm told that uh, that the the, uh, the boots were actually neighbours of La Ligue, um when it came to their villa that they had in the south of France. So um, upon Jessie's uh, death, Lady Trent decided that she wanted to remodel the church and completely um, um, remodel the interior. And, and let's go in. Let's have a look. Let's have a look inside. Oh, um, oh by the way, um, you just got a detail there of one of the heads of the um, uh, of the, the the doors to the uh, uh, the entrance to the church. But inside, um, it is quite fascinating. Um, what you don't see uh, is the ceiling, which is a glass ceiling um, illuminated. Uh, the last time I was there, I think they were illuminated by uh, by strip lighting. Um, but just uh, let's have a look at what's about. What you can't see, um, because again, this is just an aperitif. Uh, you need you need to go because um, there is a glass font. That's just the idea of being christened in a glass font. Uh, it's uh, what a wonderful start in life. Forget the silver spoon. I was christened. No, I wasn't, but I'd like to have been in a glass font designed by René Lalique. Um, so we can see here that um, uh, we've got the altar and at the side you've got the screens. So let's have a look at these screens, okay? Uh, and there they are, huge. Um, these wonderful, what I described in my book um, as life-size angels. Um, in fact, my mother, having read my book, um, which she pronounced as quite good, uh, <laughs> 
then then said i've been reading your book and it mentions in here that there are life-size angels in the church in jersey i said yes mum. she said just as a matter of interest my dear have you ever seen an angel i said well no then how can you be sure they're life-size i mean it's things like this that stop me from getting big-headed i promise you you know uh, we all need a mother like that don't we bless her anyway um the um the the church itself is um is is a, is a must um but do 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 if you visit um leave some money in the collection uh, box by the door um i mean you cannot go to jersey without going to st matthew's millbrook um and um tell him i sent you okay not, a, not an issue let's move on let's uh let's go to france well sort of france um because what we're looking at here is is a poster um by cassandra uh which used to grace my bed sit in balham um in the in the 1976-77 period and uh and it is, I was thinking of it as the nightmare view of the long distance swimmer. Can you imagine you look over your shoulder and you see this coming for you? The Normandy. And the Normandy launched in 1935, uh, was described as the floating temple of Art Deco. Uh, a big ship um, designed for the, uh, the Compagnie Générale Transatlantique, as in CGT. Um, and it had a turbo electric um, a steam um, engine uh, propulsion or whatever the term is for a ship. Um, it, it it was gross over 68,000 tonnes and when it comes to tonnage it was the biggest ship of its time and the French launched it um, with a view to winning the Blue Ribbon um, which was obviously given to those ships who crossed the Atlantic in a record time. Um, and this ship made it, believe it or not, in a little over four days. So, uh, but let's let's go back into, I, gosh, I really would love to have been on that maiden voyage in, in 1935. Um, there is some wonderful cine film. If you go online, go on YouTube, look for it. Breathtaking. It's almost in HD. Um, so if you wanted to... Uh, to, to get the, the feeling what it must have been like to be on that ship. That's the way to go. Um, but let's have a look inside. What about this? This is the first class dining room. I mean, would you want to eat anywhere else? Look at the size of it. Huge, massive. Um, and if you look down the sides, you can see these six 20 foot high simulated glass fountains designed by, yes, Irene La Leak. And the ceiling, that ceiling is all sort of coffered glass. It is, it, it, it just, it's mind boggling. There's no other word for it. Here's a, here's a detail for you uh, to give you some idea. This is from an, an original photograph, a colour photograph, um, which gives you some idea of the scale. I mean, I'd love to have been there. I really would. I just wonder what was on the menu that evening. And, um, uh, and if um, if I was to uh, be anywhere else, I, I've, certainly from 1924, uh, because Lalique was designing menu holders, I just thought I'd throw these this, these two in, uh, simply called dirt figurines. But just the idea of uh, of having a Lalique menu holder went such decadence. Anyway, um, let's uh, let's have a look at some of the diners. Uh, a black and white photograph that features all 12 of Lalique's simulated glass fountains in the background. But my interest is in the, uh, in the waiter in the foreground because he's got a tray full of glassware. And Lalique designed um, all the drinking glasses uh, for the Normandy, to the best of my knowledge. And, um, and here is a selection um, of what was designed specifically uh, for this amazing vessel. And uh, as you can see, um, they're very thinly walled glasses. That's the, the only problem with Lalique tableware is that they are relatively fragile being so thinly walled. Uh, but um, let's look at some more glassware. I, I love this design. Um, Lalique did a, at least 20 or 30 
different designs for, for, for table glass. And, and they're all matching. They're all of a specific series. This one's called uh, Strasbourg. And I love these sort of uh, these figures, the in, in the stems, and uh, and they they they, I mean, they're little little works of art in their own right. And and this one, um, Borgiel, Borgiel, I think that's the correct pronunciation. Forgive me, I've got it wrong. French um, was not my top subject, and um, most of my French has been gleaned, as I've mentioned before, from watching back episodes of Allo Allo. Uh, and uh, but anyway. Uh, carrying on, um, 1930. So um, the the Strasbourg came with, by the way, um, was designed in 1926. So um, he's forever coming up with great designs. What about this one? It's it's known as Prunel for uh, as an, and as a carafe. Although I think most of us would probably look at um, an object like this more in terms of a claret jug or whatever. Again, designed in 1923. And um, a little bit heavier in form is this cocktail set, Tomeray. Um It uh, it looks a little bit on the uh, chunky side. Having discussed how lightweight and um, delicate the, the the table glass is, it comes out up with something like this. Uh, and if um, if you're teetotal, um, you're not left out. What about this for a lemonade set um, known as Jaffa? Um, you're seeing it in amber glass. It was made in uh, frosted glass as well. I'm not sure it was made in any other colours, but uh, no doubt somebody will be telling me um, if it has been. And, and then, um, well, wait, let, let's have a look at this. Um, now, let me just explain. Um, by the time this design um, entered service, uh, in it was designed in 1947, um, René Lalique uh, had already passed away uh, in uh, in 1945. Uh, it's not a posthumous design, no, uh, because this is a design by his son Marc Lalique. Um, and sooner or later, I'm going to be wanting to put together a talk devoted to Marc Lalique, um, primarily because I think that, to a large extent, he's been living in the shadow of his father, but he was an important uh, figure when it comes to um, the ongoing development um, of the Lally glassworks. And I'm showing you this because uh, it's a firm favourite of mine. Um, and this actually is mine. <laughs> this is, I've got, I've got a pair of them. They're champagne flutes and it's known as Ange, Angel, um, but a lot of people like to refer to it as the Angel of Reims or Rance, if you prefer. Uh, the local pronunciation and um, I just think it's a total joy. Apparently uh, Mark Lalique was inspired by um, an angel um, that is carved I think in stone and it is inside um, that particular cathedral and I just love the way that the the wings are engraved into the into the flute itself. Yes these are champagne flutes and um, and if you then look at the stem, that beautiful, beautiful detail. Um, I mean, it's a difficult thing to drink out of because, you know, you're so mesmerised looking at the actual uh, champagne flute. And if you're, if you're asking me, does champagne taste better in a lally glass? You can bet your life it does. It really does. But um, that's Matt Smart Lalique, and we'll uh, be looking at him at some stage um, um, in the next few months or maybe a bit longer. Uh, I've yet to get to work on that particular talk. Uh, but here is, here is René. As I said, he, he died in, um, in 1945, just after uh, the, the declaration, uh, the signing of, uh, of peace in Europe. Um, and uh, we're looking at him in, in later years and he's, uh, he is without question, and uh, I wouldn't say an enigmatic figure, but the more I learn about him, the less I know. And I make no pretense at being a great expert on Malik Glass. And I'm, this is not self-modesty or anything silly like that. Um, I've met most of the experts and uh, 
uh, and they're in France and uh, one or two have told me that they are the definitive experts and who am I to argue for goodness sake. Uh, but in the meantime, if, you're, if you have an interest in learning that little bit more, um, then you have the option if you can find it. Um, we might have a few of these uh, turning up uh, when we can uh, at um, scottishantiques.com and um, uh, but you will find them on Amazon. It is a nuts and bolts book um, and it makes no pretense at being anything more than that. Um, you know, if you're, you're not interested in the words, then just buy it for the images because they are breathtaking. Well, thank you very much uh, for, uh, for listening in. And um, uh, let me just remind you uh, two things. Uh, the first is that more talks are going to follow this on different subjects. Uh, and secondly, that, um, you know, my all my talks have been with a view to raising a bit of a uh, bit of money uh, on behalf of the British Red Cross to fight this this nasty, evil virus that we're having to contend with. And um, whatever you can spare would be well received. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching and for listening. And um, just to uh, say once again, um, in the meantime, uh, keep washing your hands and keep looking out for you and yours. Take care. Stay safe.